The Subcommittee on National Security and the Subcommittee on Government Operations will come to order. Without objection, the Chair is authorized to declare a recess at any time. The United States faces clear and present dangers from Islamic jihadists both at home and abroad. From the attacks in Paris to the massacre in San Bernardino, it is clear that militant Islamists are on the march. Identifying terrorists and stopping them before they can strike must be a priority for the United States and its allies. Certainly, the federal government has a duty to prevent terrorists and those sympathetic to their aims from entering the United States, a duty that it is not currently satisfying. Almost 12 years ago, the Bipartisan 9-11 Commission provided a roadmap for the government to follow in fulfilling these crucial responsibilities. It stated, quote, targeting travel is at least as powerful a weapon against terrorists as targeting their money. The United States should combine terrorist travel intelligence operations and law enforcement in a strategy to intercept terrorists, find terrorist travel facilitators, and constrain, constrain terrorist mobility, end quote. Our consular officers abroad and the inspectors at our ports of entry are on the first line of defense in this strategy. Most foreign nationals who seek to enter the United States must apply to the State Department and meet with one of those consular officers to obtain a visa. Those officers are trained to spot, separate bona fide travelers from those with malevolent intentions. Yet, as we have seen with the visa issued to San Bernardino terrorist Tashfin Malik, these officers have not always been successful at weeding out militant Islamists. An exception to the rule that an individual seeks entry to the United States must apply for and receive a visa before entering this country is the Visa Waiver Program. The Visa Waiver Program allows foreign nationals of 38 countries, mostly in Europe, to enter the United States as non-immigrant visas for up to 90 days without having to obtain a visa or undergo an in-person interview at a U.S. consulate. Approximately 20 million foreign nationals enter each year under the program, constituting 37 percent of all visitors from overseas. And as this committee has uh, uh, shown in testimony, many have overstayed that 90 days without consequence. The November 13, 2015 terrorist attacks in Paris made clear that there were vulnerabilities in the visa waiver program. The terrorists in that, in that massacre killed 130 people and caused over 350 injuries, and at least five of the attackers were French national, two of whom were living in Belgium, and one was a Belgian national. And nationals of both France and Belgium are able to enter the United States under the Visa Waiver Program. Accordingly, at least six of the Paris attackers could have attempted to enter this country under the Visa wa Waiver Program, although they would have needed was a plane ticket. Those attacks highlight the fact that even within the borders of our closest international partners, there are inter insular communities sheltering militant Islamists bent on destroying our way of life. Many Islamic jihadists in places such as Syria are Western passport holders or dual nationals who could take advantage of the visa waiver program. This exposes the American people to the possibility that these militants, after being trained and further radicalized in Syria and Iraq, could exploit the visa waiver program to enter this country. These concerns and others were understood by this committee in two hearings that we held in early December. In the first, we identified flaws in the visa waiver program that could be exploited by terrorists and criminals. In the second hearing, which followed from the findings of the first, the full committee looked at potential defects in our nation's terrorist screening scheme as a whole. In response to these concerns and others, Congress crafted a bipartisan measure that included several changes to the visa waiver program intended to prevent terrorists from exploiting the program and to address other national security concerns, and those changes took effect uh, were signed into law in December. The bill responded to concerns that were raised about the risks related to visa fee travel by foreign nationals who carry both passports of visa waiver countries and of other countries that are not friendly to the United States, as well as individuals who have traveled to countries of concern and state sponsors of terrorism, including Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Sudan. It did not prevent those individuals from entering our country, but it did require them to obtain a visa before coming to the United States. It gave the Secretary of State the authority to designate additional countries of concern. And finally, the bill gave the Secretary of Homeland Security very limited authority to waive these provisions for specific and targeted national security or law enforcement purposes. Uh, as it has done in the past, however, this administration refused to abide by the limits placed on it by Congress. After these changes were signed into law, the Iranian government objected that the restrictions would violate the nuclear agreement, the so-called Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which was adopted in October of 2015. The Iranians claim that the joint uh, JCPOA obliges the United States 
not to take any actions that will, quote, adversely affect the normalization of trade and economic relations with Iran, end quote. In response, the administration moved to placate Iran in a letter to the Iranian foreign minister dated one day after the President signed the visa waiver bill on the law, the Secretary of State made clear that the administration would find ways to ensure that changes to visa waiver program would not interfere with Iran's, quote, legitimate business interests. Subsequently, on January 21, 2016, the administration announced that it would use what was intended to be a limited law enforcement exception to allow foreign nationals who have traveled to Iran, Iraq, Sudan, and Syria as journalists, aid workers, military or government workers, or for unspecified legitimate business-related purposes to be issued waivers to the restrictions contained in the bill. Travel for purported legitimate business-related purpose was exactly the type of travel that Congress sought to restrict. In the real world, espionage is likely to involve transfer of restricted goods and technology by intermediaries who are putatively citizens of friendly or neutral nations, so it is to be carried out in secret by foreign intelligence officers. I'm concerned about these actions, both as chairman of the National Security Subcommittee and as a member of the House Judiciary Committee. The Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte uh, told the House Judiciary Committee that the administration's decision to abuse their limited waiver authority and allow scores of people who have traveled to or are dual nationals of countries like Iraq and Syria flies in the face of the reason and congressional intent. The Obama administration, he says, is essentially rewriting the law by blowing wide open a small window of discretion that Congress gave it for law enforcement and national security reasons. In fact, the categories of people that the Obama administration exempting from the law were exp expressly rejected by Congress, end quote. This administration takes these actions in clear violation of the law and does so to favor a known state sponsor of terrorism. And I would add, businesses in Iran uh, many of them are controlled by the Revolutionary Guard Corps, which is a designated terrorist organization. So I thank our witnesses for their testimony today, and I look forward to examining issues related to the impact of this executive action on the visa waiver program. I now recognize the ranking member of the Subcommittee on National Security, Mr. Lynch, for his opening statement.